Wilfred, what was your verdict on David's run? Well, I mean, uh, honestly, watching yesterday's uh, race, the 800 meters, you know, um, I was just at the end of the um, line there. And, of course, you know, when he crossed the, the 400 meter mark with 49, I knew that for sure, you know, he has a big chance, you know, to beat the world record. And I, would, I want to say this, you know, I was really proud of him, uh, especially um, he took over from me. And what better way, you know, for, for, for me to have the, the medal coming back home. But do you think, Jan, that yet again he'll be overshadowed by Bolt, although arguably Radisha's performance was, was all the more remarkable? It's more remarkable, and it even took away uh, the last Norwegian Olympic record from Bebjorn uh, Rudal from uh, Atlanta in 96. Uh, uh, everyone will be uh, overshadowed by um, Usain Bolt and the way he, he performs. Mm. So, uh, but uh, what Radisha did was um, outworldly. What was your take on the evening's events, Jacqueline? Well, it was an unbelievably exciting night at the athletics to be there. And of course, with Radisha's run being first, I think we could appreciate a world record. The first on this track, it's supposed to be so fast, and yet he was the only one, an 800 metre runner, to break the first world record. So that was a remarkable in itself. Lord Coe today was saying, of course, he held the world record in the 800 back uh, so many years ago now. He was saying that this was the super performance of the Games mm -hmm. and he doesn't expect anything will actually surpass it. So certainly from Lord Coe's perspective, mm -hmm. Radisha's effort was the more magnificent. But, I mean, Usain Bolt's the showman, isn't he? And it was unbelievable performance again. The greatest, he's done the double-double, the 100 and the 200 in successive Olympics. And the showmanship that he has started is becoming more and more common. Is that what we want from our athletes? Or do you actually like it when someone like David Radisha is a bit more low-key, Jan? We are Norwegians. We, um, <laughs> we used to be low-key. Uh, so we love uh, Usain Bolt even more. Yeah. Now, uh, even including uh, press-ups, which uh, I don't think we've seen too much of before. No, so. David Radisha didn't do press-ups. Ezekiel well, Kenboy did a good dance, though, when he won the yeah. steeplechase. Well, let me say this first before we go you know, to Ezekiel Kenboy, because I think with Rudisha, the best, it was the best gift for Sepp Hall, because we know that he's the chairman of the organizing committee. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he never won a gold medal in his specialty, as much as he was a uh, world record holder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know very well that, you know, they have been very much in touch with uh, Rudisha, and I think, you know, it was the best gift that Go could get back home here, having the world record, you know, broken back uh, at home, you know. So I think it was the best thing that happened last night. And as one of the fastest men to have ever run the 800 metres, give us an insight, Wilfred, into exactly how hard it is to do what David Radisha did last well, night. I, I think if we look back, um, breaking a world record, you know, in an Olympic Games or even in World Championships never happened. You know, the only time that I think was, was in 1976, that six years down the line, it never happened. Because what happened is uh, the most important thing that uh, you have to do as an 800 metre runner is... Um, to get the splits right. That, uh, the only thing that can help you is a rapid or a pacemaker who can be able to give you the splits. Right. But we saw David last night, you know, always the fastest. Uh, it was like a time trial, wasn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, look, um, he did 23, which is always fast, the uh, first yeah. 200. Then he did 25, then 26, 26. So he got his splits correctly. Absolutely. Well, wherever you're watching in the world, if you've got questions for any of our guests, you're very welcome to get in touch. Well, have you say at bbc.com is the email. You can get us on Skype, bbc underscore WHYS. Some good news for those of you watching in Russia. Your women's team has won the synchronized swimming gold. And to be honest, uh, we saw that coming. You were way, way in the lead after the first day. And if there are any of you sniggering about that event, well, we're going to be getting on to whether some sports do belong in the Olympics and some don't. And actually, Jacqueline, synchronized swimming for a while wasn't taken seriously, but that debate seems to have gone away. People seem to have accepted it belongs in the Olympics. I think they appreciate the strength and ability of the women. You can't touch the bottom of that pool. And I know with Team GB, Robin Cousins, the great ice skater, who's helping them with their choreography, mm. didn't know. He thought that they were pushing off the bottom of the pool to do their fantastic <laughs> lifts. And uh, so that was an eye opener for him. It's about educating people. I mean, to tread water for that length of time and to show the strength and skill and grace and the timing is phenomenal. And I, I can appreciate that sport. Right. I think it should be stayed. New underwater cameras as well, which uh, <laughs> makes you us uh, uh, appreciate it even more. Okay, let's put up this uh, post from IBV on the New York Times website. Mr. Bolt is a wonder of running. I love his rapport with the crowd and seeing the love for him after the race is so joyous. 
he should be an ambassador to the world with that type of charisma. I guess that depends if he's up for the job. And the BBC sports writer Tom Fordyce on bbc.com slash news wrote, with a blistering world record in the greatest 800 metres ever, Radisha showed the wide world what athletics fans have been trying to tell them for the past two years. This man is extraordinary. But I have to say, Wilfred, I still remain sceptical about whether he's going to become a global star just because he seems focused on his running, but he doesn't seem interested in the media side of things. I'm not saying he should be. Well, I, I, I think I have to uh, bring to your attention that uh, initially um, many African athletes, you know, were um, scared of the media. And unfortunately, you know, they were not able to maybe, I would say, you know, communicate well. But the current uh, athletes that we have, you know, I have to commend them because at the end of the day, at least they're more outgoing. We saw David Rutisha yesterday, you know, giving um, interviews to almost every channel, you know, that wanted to have an interview, which is something very, um, I would say, very commendable for him. And I think, honestly speaking, you know, he's a humble boy, as we know, and uh, he's going to go far. I think we have to respect the personalities of the athletes. We can't make super celebrity superstars out of everybody. Mm. It just happens that Usain Bolt's got the glamour event, the 100 metres and the 200 metres. He's a showman and he's benefiting from that. But David Rudisha, he's showing it on the track and that's where it really counts. And I think his performances are really respected by aficionados of the sport, whereas the general public will probably right. go more for Bolt. And you're right, Seb Coe has come out and said this is almost certainly going to be the, the standout performance of the Games. But what about the three of you? What one sporting performance would you pick out as being the pinnacle of what you've seen, yeah? One difficult question uh, after all the brilliant performances we've seen. Um, I think uh, <laughs> we have one gold medal in Norway. I should uh, mention that one. But I still think uh, the sixth uh, goal of uh, so Chris Hoy mm -hmm. made an impression. Yeah. yeah, that was a good moment. What about you, Jacqueline? That, that was actually my pick because uh, six gold medals. <laughs> he hasn't been beaten. He's done 60 Kieran races and he's only been beaten four times. He got mm -hmm. second place four times, crashed once and has won every other Kieran race he's ever competed in, which is an amazing effort. Mm -hmm. uh, that, and of course, Sally Pearson, the 100 metre hurdles, an Australian girl who I've yeah. known since she was 16 and I was so pleased for her to win that race. I think my, my one at the moment would probably be the women's Kieran when Victoria Pendleton, under severe pressure, won by not very much, and that was a huge thrill. A shame that she lost to Anna Mears, but Jacqueline and I can thrash that out uh, <laughs> over the next um, few minutes. If you want to call us up, by the way, we're live here on BBC World News. I'm looking for a few of your thoughts. I'd like to know the one uh, sporting moment which has stood out for you in these Olympic Games. Also, what sports would you add in Rio if you could, and which ones would you get rid of? And if you're watching from afar, what's your verdict on London as a host? You can also post on facebook.com slash world have your say. I can see we've got calls coming in from Nigeria, Cambodia, Somalia, Saudi Arabia and India. Yeah, and have there been any sports that you would, what you've been watching and thinking this really doesn't deserve to be in the Olympics? I'm not too fond of ta Taekwondo. I, I don't understand the rules. I've tried, um, but um, I'm still working on it. You so I'll, I'll give the sport what, uh, four more years and after that uh, it's gone for me. What about you, Wilfred? Well, you know, I'm talking from the point of view, um, I would say, you know, the wearer of the shoe who understands where it pinches. You know, I'm a sports person myself, and I would say this, that I don't think that there's any sport that should be removed. Instead, we should be adding more, because, look, Olympics is not about what you're special in, you know, as a country. You know, it's about bringing that speciality that you are good, you know, to show to the world. And that's why, you know, I think for me, um, there's no any competition that I would say, you know, it's, it's not watched, because in any case, if we talk about certain uh, sport, for example, you know, maybe certain country are watching, and mm. if I may talk about um, events like um, table tennis, for example, yeah. you know, people will be like, okay, who watches table tennis? But at the end of the day, we me, know very well. That, <laughs> yeah, but we know very well. Yeah. people in China. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Over 1.2 billion people watches that, yeah. you know, which is something that is important. So I think... Okay, so you, you say don't take anything out, but oh. we'll talk about what you would put in. But what about you, Jacqueline? You could get rid of a sport? Oh, look, I agree with Wilfred, but I know that they won't uh, replace, uh, add more sports without taking more out. They, yeah. They're not going to grow the games any bigger. So I think I, I struggle with wrestling, but I think I'd replace it with sumo wrestling because I enjoy that. <laughs> <Okay>. So uh... <laughs> so out with the Greco-Roman and in with the sumo. I think I would think about reducing the amount of swimming. 
Yeah. I just, I, I, it's not that I don't like swimming, but there just seems to be an awful lot of it, day after day after day. And I don't know if that, I mean, swimmers just tell me that's the way they do things, but they seem to have access to more medals than most people. They do, and we can then debate about the argument, is Michael Phelps the greatest athlete? Because he's had the opportunity to right. win all those great gold medals, whereas another athlete only has a chance to win mm. one medal at an Olympic Games. So, uh, well, that's another show, I'm sure. All right, well, we'll talk about that. And we'll also talk about which sports you would add in. My vote is going for squash and for BMX Freestyle. I'll explain myself to you three and everyone watching <laughs> a little bit later on, but let's just take a quick break here on the BBC. Hi, I'm Ros Atkins. Welcome back to World Have Your Say. Of course, we're talking about the Olympics. Just two days to go now till the closing ceremony, and we're getting your verdict on the games on a whole range of fronts. We've said goodbye just for the moment to Jan. Ricardo Setion is joining us. He's a radio journalist from Brazil. Nice to see you, Ricardo. Nice to see you. Nice to see that. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice to see. It's a good view, isn't it? Well, we were talking about which sports we might be interested in adding in Rio if we could. I was saying squash and BMX freestyle would get my two votes. What about you? I was waiting so many days for someone to ask me that because mm -hmm. I find it so strange that we're going to open in Rio in 2016 rugby and golf that has nothing to do with Brazil. And instead of not instating a Brazilian sport, which is futsal, which is played by 125 countries, I would take BMX out. All right. What about squash, BMX? Anyone interested in this? Am I fighting alone? You like BMX? I love BMX and it, it's only been in the last, in Beijing. Yeah. And I think it was so exciting and there were so many viewers around the world that absolutely loved it. It's fast, it's brilliant. All kids around the world, are, they're on their bikes. That's what they do. I think it's brilliant. And why not golf? I mean, so many I think people. the argument is that if a sport is at the Olympics, the Olympics should be the pinnacle of that sport. And that's always been the argument with tennis, is that it's a big deal for Andy Murray to win a gold. It's not as big a deal as if he won a Grand Slam. And that's, don't you think that's fair enough, Jacqueline? Well, that is the argument, but we've seen Andy Murray's reaction this time, winning an Olympic gold medal. It's been phenomenal. And I think that that will give him enormous confidence to, to take on Federer again. But, of course, you've also got the situation where... Uh, we've got football here that has got crowds of 80,000 people going and watching under 23 football competitions. So I think it's been a huge success. I don't think that argument uh, washes any right. longer. So we have an argument because I think football should be out of the, of the Olympics because you see Brazil, for example, we have a team made of 22 professionals earning a lot of money. One of them just signed with Chelsea, the other one in Paris Saint-Germain, earning more money than everybody in that studio and everybody maybe watching us. And I think uh, they don't stay in the village, they don't travel economy, they travel business. So the crowd is one thing. BMX, as you say, I think it's extremely good. But I was excited when I went to see Greco-Roman uh, wrestling. This is Olympic. Uh, javelin, <laughs> this is Olympic. Because the Olympic is still the non-professional bit, even if you have to stay uh, what focused. about the bit in the wrestling where one guy goes on all fours and the amazing. other guy has to flip him in over? In Brazil, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no comment on that one. There are lots of tweets. Uh, we're getting lots of messages picking out there the best moment of the Olympics. Several people have said Oscar Pistorius's race was the greatest moment of London 2012. He got to the semis of the 400 metres and there's a, a great moment when uh, Karani James from Grenada swapped the, the, the badge they had on and uh, I think a lot of people were excited about that. Uh, Mo says, the Jamaican 1-2-3, that's definitely the greatest moment for me. And Hussein, in, uh, I guess in London, says, well, after the devastating riots of a year ago, the greatest moment is just that these Olympics have been happening in, in London. And one year on, certainly the contrast is a big one. What We've talked a bit about the, the moments you would pick out. From Australia's point of view, I guess most of the good moments have come in the last few days, really. Well, they have. I've noticed that the uh, maritime have uh, come to our rescue <laughs> in, in the sailing. But uh, I think these games, the best thing that's happened is the weather. And that was the unexpected bonus, that we've had lovely blue skies, hardly no rain. And uh, for, you know, living here for the last couple of years to, mm. and the last six months where it's rained every day, it's um, really made a difference to I'm have sunshine. That's not going to be a problem in Rio. The sun's going to be out, <laughs> guaranteed, right? You will melt, trust me. Okay. I, but you will melt of pleasure. <laughs> I think the greatest moment is that we see the hub of the world, the belly button of the world, doing uh, uh, Olympic Games like if it was a lady, you know, that paints her nails very nicely, and after two weeks it fades away. But the nails are there, healthy. London will continue to, like, normal. 
Rio, I've heard no. this city Rio, compared with lots of no. things, but Rio never is going to be something else. Before. Rio is going to be a, nobody speaks English as you think. It's going to be fun, messy, crazy. <laughs> it's the place to be. So I think the fact that I'm holding here a paper that World Cup cities, they just amazing. Yeah. They, they 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 come here to learn from your mistakes, to make the World Cup grow from a platform of the Olympics. It's it's amazing. All right. But, well, um, Rose, look at when the immediately at the closing ceremony in uh, in Beijing, you know, I remember um, I was in the bus, you know, going back to the Olympic uh, village, and I was with uh, some uh, British, you know, team that was there, mm -hmm. and I was asked them, "What do you think about the games? You know, are you going to state the same thing as um, here? You know, what they have done?" And they are like, "Well, we will try, but honestly speaking, you know, we didn't expect what we have shown, but it is the greatest." Uh, Olympic ever, if I may say so. Well, I think that will go down very well with a lot of people who live here. And those of you who are watching, who are sending in questions for Wilfred in uh, your hundreds, we're going to put those to you in a minute, Wilfred. But we're going to bring in right now Rebecca Ricardo, who's in North Carolina, who runs a website called The Olympic Fanatics. You'll get the idea of where she's coming from. Hi, great to have you on. World have Hi, your thanks. say. What's your verdict on the Games? I would have to say, without a doubt, these Olympics are the best we've had so far uh, in this 21st century. It, they've just been brilliant. The, the fans have been wonderful. The athletes have been so humble and, and appreciative. It's been a wonderful two weeks. And if I asked you to pick out one moment which has pleased you, an Olympic fanatic, what would it be? Well, that is a difficult question. Um, there's so, been so many moments. Um, I would probably have to say this past Saturday, when Great Britain won three golds in track and field. Mm -hmm. um, that for me was just incredibly moving. And I can't imagine what it must have felt like to be British and to, to witness that. Well, it was reasonably exciting. I think it's fair <laughs> to say. And Wilfred, I wonder, we've got Mo Farah coming up in the 5,000, obviously half the distance of the 10,000. Do you think he has the, the speed to do it? Well, I, I think, you know, um, watching Mo run the, 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 the semifinals, in the 5,000, you know, he's in a class of his own, if I may say so. And I think, you know, he has a big chance at the moment. Of course, the pressure is there. But I think um, the, the beautiful thing that happened here is that, you know, the British um, team or Team GB, for example, is that they were able to handle the pressure because, unfortunately, most of the time, as an athlete or as sports people that you are there and you are back home, mm -hmm. you always under a lot of pressure. But we realize that these guys, they use the pressure that they had to their advantage. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what they have done. And that's why... I expect more to win. Of course, you know, I want my fellow Kenyans to win, yeah. but I know it's going to be uh, really, really, really very yeah. challenging. Can't wait for that one. Let's pull up this uh, comment from Matthew Fisher, who writes for the Ottawa Citizen in Canada. Once you leave the Olympic Park, the environment's so different. It's a bit like falling off a cliff. It's almost totally devoid of the joyous Olympic spirit or the veneer of prosperity that reigns so close by. How many of the venues will quickly become underused or derelict white elephants? Well, we can't predict the future in terms of the venues, but we can talk about how the city has been. Ricardo, as you've gone further or further away from East London, do you think that comment is fair? I think I feel it very much. It's totally right. I, this is my sixth Olympic Games. I mean, Beijing came saying, look at me, I'm strong. Look at my buildings, my bird nest. Uh, the UK say, look, I've been always here. Look at me, I can do temporary buildings. Nice. When it's over, as I said, the, nails, the nail paint goes away. Brazil say, look, come see, because we need those buildings, we need this atmosphere, never go away. I think uh, he's totally right, especially on this cliff. We feel it amazing. It seems sometimes there's no Olympics. I, I disagree, because I've come to this country and I was initially shocked at how everyone was so reserved and uh, very standoffish and didn't communicate much. And I've now been riding on the tube and people talk to each other, which is so unusual here. So for me, the transformation has been quite You do know marked. it's going to stop, though. People are going to yes. get back to not talking to each other, don't you? Possibly. <laughs> but I think that it's, it's, people are far more relaxed here now and are into the Olympic mm. spirit and enjoying it in a way that perhaps foreigners don't really understand because they haven't underseen seen how bad it was before. I did a bit of a yeah. test though today. I, I live in South East London and I took the, the bus and then the tube and then a couple more buses all the way through East, you know, Central and East London. And really if I hadn't known that the Olympics were on, apart from occasionally a sign hanging from a lamppost, 
there was nothing at all to give it away. I think they're all watching the BBC coverage because there's record <laughs> numbers and uh, I, I think that it's been phenomenal, the, the support. But perhaps it's just unrealistic, Ricardo, to think that you can have an event in a city this big and the whole city will buy into it's it. It's unrealistic what's happening in London. I think, uh, and I'm glad we disagree because it's interesting how I left the venue of the Horse, uh, horse Guard Parade. Yeah, 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 that's the way you call it. Beach Volleyball. Which left me overwhelmed and I walked to Piccadilly and I was in Piccadilly what 300 meters away mm -hmm. 400 there was nothing there was some people with an accreditation some flags of why do I care if the flag of Nepal is there with all the love I have <laughs> no, for Nepalese well, but, 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 but the people, Olympic is something else some people watching in Nepal thinking I care that it's there well yes, I know you've yeah. got a point yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> well, because, you know, hold that thought because we're going into uh, <laughs> the break here but we'll keep on talking about all of these issues here on World Have Your Say in a couple of minutes' time. Well, here on the sofa, Ricardo is still with us. Jan has come back. We've said goodbye briefly to Wilfred Bungay, but to those of you who are getting in touch wanting to speak to him, don't worry, he's coming back. And Potkin's just joined us here on the sofa. Hello. He's an Iranian blogger. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. You've been itching to tell me which sports you'd get out. Uh, <laughs> so let me just sit back and uh, hear what you've got to say. It, it has to be Taekwondo. I mean, it's just, it's like watching two school girls kick the, kicking each other. It's, uh, I just can't see any sense into it. I think something like synchronised mm. swimming is even more manly than taekwondo. It's got to go. <laughs> this is a man who presumably is quite keen on Greco-Roman wrestling. Well, actually, freestyle wrestling is more our sport. We normally don't do that well in uh, Greco wrestling. Uh, you had four but Iran's had four goals. Exactly, and it's the, the, all the credit should go to one man, and that is the coach. Mohammad Banner is an unbelievable mm. Greco-Roman wrestling coach. Uh, when he wasn't the coach, Iran didn't do well. When he when when uh, he is the coach now, Iran's won three gold, which is three out of the four gold medals mm -hmm. that we won. So, you know, a huge credit should go to this man who single-handedly uh, has made this tournament the most successful Olympic tournament Iran has ever been in, and it's a shame that he's retiring after this. And I know that some of the athletes in the wrestling have made their political views known, and that's kind of divided fans. Do you approve when athletes let their politics hang out? No, I mean, um, I, I assume that you're referring to Hamid Surian, mm -hmm. who, uh, that's where all the controversy was about. He was the one who um, uh, presented his gold medal to Ahmadinejad at the height of the killing and the uh, uh, crackdown on the uh, post-election protests. Um, if he chooses to mix politics with sports, mm -hmm. he can't expect people not to choose politics with sports. Uh, I have to admit, I didn't have that much joy when he won the gold. I, you know, but this I has come up again with the, the Syrian team, with some supporters of the opponents in Syria saying these athletes shouldn't be turning out. They're helping to give Assad a veneer of respectability. Ricardo, do you agree with that? Or should sport yeah. be kept out of it, uh, I, politics be kept out of it? I think everybody says politics is out, but if not, because I heard about the Lebanese in judo do not want to warm up by the Israelis. I mean, uh, we have a situation that uh, there is the whole argument about the 40 years of mm -hmm. the assassination of the 11 athletes. And nobody wants to talk about what they didn't die in the middle of the Olympics. So I think there is a complex situation. I'm totally uh, agreeing with you. I wouldn't be so happy to see Syria athletes. I don't know who they stand for. If not, why England is giving so much aid to Syria? Well, uh, let me Syria, uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> not the government people. Yeah, seven million uh, dollars going towards the rebels. Well, I've got a bit of news from the Olympic Park. Just behind me here is the BMX track, and Colombia has taken the gold in the women's race. Fantastic news for those of you in Colombia. Disappointment here in Britain. Sinead Reid uh, was widely tipped to get a gold. That's just happened. I'll get you a full rundown of the gold, silver, and bronze in a moment. But Colombia, and to be honest, she was looking the best rider during the semis. She has taken the gold. Congratulations uh, to her. Let me read you some of the messages that have come in. Natalia is watching us in Belgium. Hi, Natalia. Thanks for getting in touch. She says, the Beijing Olympics were so political and controversial, they stole attention from the real focus, the athletes and the events. London has done this better. Great job, London. Well done, Team GB. Veronica is in Dubai. Hi, Veronica. This has been a great effort by Great Britain. I love the venues, but the drawbacks of the organizing and the planning, there's still room for improvement. Difficult to please, Veronica. And Charles on Facebook <laughs> says, the lows of these games have been the controversies, especially getting the South Korea flag. Well, I think um, 
the uh, organisers have already apologised for that. I'm surprised there's been criticism of the organisation, and uh, because actually almost everyone I've spoken to has said it's been smoothly run, even if they have reservations about other parts. Well, of the I was game. speaking to Yan just before, and because he he was covering the Beijing Olympics as well, and I was asking him how he compares with that, and he made a very good point. This is a lot more relaxed. He was saying that in Beijing, I mean, you can say it better yourself, but he was no, saying I'm in Beijing... No, I'm not doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could just answer all of your answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have some more. <laughs> I'm, I'm just quoting him because I think he made a very valid point. You know, he was saying the officials, what, you know, they had so much power and, you know, there were so many uh, houses that was abolished, that, that abolished. There, was so, there was so much land that was, you know, flattened just to get the Olympics going. None of that happened here. This is a very relaxed Olympics where people can just enjoy it, and I think it's, it's to the credit of London. Um, everyone thought it was going to be a lot of traffic. Even that didn't happen. Well, I think a lot of people left town. Exactly. Um, we'll hear uh, from Jan what you said back to him in a moment. But, uh, first of all, I've been I'm inviting all of you watching uh, to call us on BBC underscore WHYS. You can do that on Skype. Roger's done just that. He's in Calgary. Hi, Roger. What do you want to say? Hi. Well, I want to make a case for IPL T20 cricket. I think that it's a very exciting sport. It's very short. It's results-oriented, and it's been watched by millions of people all over the world. I don't know if... Um, most of the world know about the IPL, but if they ever tune in, it's, it's a, just a wonderfully exciting game. And I think it would fit in nicely to the Olympic uh, schedule. Well, this is interesting. I was doing a radio show for BBC World Service Radio a couple of days ago at a Trinidadian cultural village in London. When I said, what sport would you add? Loads of people said T20 cricket. Uh, you're looking like you don't even know quite what it is. <laughs> it's the shortest form of cricket, 20 overs each. It takes about three hours to go, Jan. Uh, I'd love to have cricket. Uh, I don't understand anything of it, but uh, it's getting <laughs> more and more popular. Learn, right? Yeah, it is, it is. And the Olympics is a place to learn, isn't it? I'm surprised rugby hasn't been an Olympic sport until mm. now. I think that is the greatest game ever. It's uh, something that, you know, you can't slow it down. It's, it's a very athletic game. Um, I'm, very, I'm very pleased to know that it's going to be included in, the, um, uh, in Brazil. Oh, Perfect right. for Brazilians. <laughs> we just lost 100 to 1 against Chile three weeks ago. What's the start? I can't, um, I can't I was be worse. All of you we are watching, optimistics. I was, I was promising all of you watching the full result from the women's BMX. Mariana Pajan of Colombia taking gold. Congratulations to her. Sarah Walker of New Zealand, a great result for her taking the silver. And Laura Smulders of the Netherlands taking bronze. So no medal for Sinead Reid for the second Olympics running. And when you consider she's one of the top riders in the world, that will be a bitter pill. Let me have, have a look through some of the other new sports that are being suggested. Uh, Arad on Twitter says, BMX freestyle, I was lobbying for this one earlier, says, it would be a bunch of bar spins, tail whips, back flips, front flips, flares and other rad stuff. <laughs> How, who am I to argue? I'd like to see that. Paul in Christchurch in New Zealand says, it'd be great if cricket was added. The 2020 format would work. He's looking forward to golf and rugby sevens, though, Ricardo. Well, I, I welcome him. He could come and teach us. I think <laughs> we're going to have trouble because the attendance will be fully foreigner. So you could even find one place that you speak only English in Rio. And uh, Utiup uh, on Twitter says, Malaysia's lobbying for squash, which I'm glad to hear because it seems to me it ought to be in the games. And Hong Kong is going for Mahjong. What would you put in, Pokin? What was that last one? <laughs> Mahjong. It's a game. Uh, as I said, rugby would have been my, my, uh, my first choice. I really can't understand why rugby is not uh, an Olympic sport until now. Rugby sevens. I mean, no one plays rugby Rugby seven, seven is, is a very fast game. I used to play at school and I, I loved it. it it's, uh, oh, it's, it. It'd be awesome. Uh, it would definitely bring in a lot of viewers, no doubt. That's Much more than taekwondo, like two school <laughs> girls kicking each other. Still angry. How are the, uh, <laughs> you need to let the taekwondo go. No, I, I, can't. Uh, <laughs> I think he was beaten by somebody. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, no taekwondo so. practice. Uh, well, well, like, 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 have you had, you had an extreme that. taekwondo experience? Yeah. Yeah. What, what happened? Uh, what well, actually well, happened in school? No, 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 no. No taekwondo player can come near me, honestly. Keep your uh, comments coming, and don't forget, Wilfred Bungay will be back to answer your questions in a couple of minutes' time. Hi, I'm Ros Atkins. This is World Have Your Say, overlooking the Olympic Park as we cast an eye over the 2012 Games. Taylor has tweeted us to say, my new Olympic sport would be ultimate frisbee. I'm liking this. He says, just so we can watch the Asian countries kicking it, crouching tiger, hidden dragon style. Maybe they could get rid of taekwondo and replace it with ultimate frisbee. I don't know. That might work. Ahmed in Toronto says, there are too many swimming events, halve them. 
And Dan Hodgie is a blogger for the Daily Telegraph newspaper, says Philip Zidoe, and that's the British triple jumper, he says, has claimed gold in the new Olympic sport of cutting off your nose to spite your face. Let's bring in Savannah Nightingale from the World Have Your Say team to hear what's being said on the phones. Hi, Savannah. Hi, Ross. How are you? I hope you're well over there. We've been getting a lot of calls coming in from South Africa. Ghana and Malaysia. We've had this from Pakistan. Samia says, I think the games have been absolutely magnificent, but I recommend T20 cricket must be added to the Olympics. Danny in Birmingham in England says, we at Team GB have done extremely well so far, but we need other sports covered. And he recommends darts, golf and snooker. And then Levine in the USA posts on Twitter, McDonald's continues to be the official restaurant of the Olympic Games. I will never, ever understand that. Seems a lot of you have been tweeting and calling us with that comment as well. Nee in the UK tweeted, true Olympic legacy would be for each Team GB athlete to adopt a school and to give free coaching and mentoring. It's time to give a little bit back. And Shearox in Australia posts, what am I going to do now that the Olympics is drawing to a close? I think I'm going to need some serious therapy. Well, there you go. Keep your calls coming in and you can keep tweeting us. The hashtag is WHYS. Thanks, Savannah. Yeah, we're all going to have quite a lot of time on our hands, aren't we? Now there aren't Sports we know very little about, featuring people we've never heard of, but for some reason we're massively emotionally <laughs> involved. Now, uh, let's say uh, we've said goodbye to Ricardo. Wilfried Bunga is back, the 800 metres champion from Beijing. Yan and Potkin are still here. Wilfried, we've had lots of calls and questions for you. Quite a lot of people would like to ask how you would explain to people back in East Africa the success of the British athletes. Having seen them at these games, how have they gone from one gold in Atlanta to what they're doing now? Well, I think the, the most important thing that we can learn as East Africans is that, um, you know, being regarded as the best, you know, and especially being able to under under pressure, because I know for a fact that, you know, the, the British athletes, you know, they were under a lot of pressure, as, as I said before, you know, performing here at home. For example, you know, uh, my countrymen and women, you know, they were coming here as the favorite, and unfortunately, like 1,500 meters, if I may talk about 1,500 meters, you know, the boys, you know, they were really uh, number one, two, three in terms of ranking for this year. But I think the pressure that they had on their shoulders, you know, they were not able to handle compared, for example, with their British athletes. Because, you know, for them, in fact, if we talk about anyone who was under a lot of pressure, it should have been the British athletes, but they perform on, uh, under the pressure. So that is something that is so important that you are able to handle as an athlete. And I'll get the other questions for you in a moment, but I was promising all of you watching the result from the BMX. Maris Stromberg of Latvia has won the men's gold medal. Congratulations to him. Sam Willoughby of Australia, silver. Carlos Zabala of Colombia, bronze. And with Colombia winning the gold as well, it really has been a fantastic day in the BMXing for uh, Colombians. So if you're watching there, I hope you enjoy that result. Now, another question, uh, Wilfred, everyone wants to ask you is whether you would like Kenya to host the Olympics. Is that something you would like them to take on? Well, Rose, let me point um, this fact that when it was um, South Africa to host the World Cup, you know, everybody, there were so many skeptics, you know, who say that, uh, are they really going to deliver? Mm. And I think South Africans, for example, show that, you know, Africans can host any major event. And I think, you know, uh, Kenya, given uh, 10 years down the line, honestly, you know, they'll be able to do it. All right, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, let me pull up this comment from Sarah Coles on AOL.co.uk. Should it really cost tens of billions of pounds in order to provide a few weeks of work to a few thousand people and will the nation really be better off with the addition of a few specialist stadiums and the experience of having been able to watch gymnastics or table tennis being from a local venue you couldn't even get tickets for as opposed to the other side of the world and yeah not many people are saying it wasn't good fun but some people are saying it was good fun but it was just you know it's I could have a good time if I booked into the most expensive hotel in the world <laughs> but I can't afford it should Britain have tried to afford the games at this cost, nine billion pounds, 15 mil billion it's not dollars. not that much compared to the Beijing Olympics. And uh, what, you will, um, what it will depend on is whether you ha will have a lasting impression on, um, for example, well, the east of London, um, the youth. Well, everything. you're from one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Yeah. Would you like to see the Oslo Games? No. 
Why not? No, I mean, that would uh, increase our nationalism, uh, chauvinism even more. It's right. not good for us. We want, we want to travel the world. What about the Tehran games? <laughs> well, <laughs> definitely not uh, under this regime. I mean, I can just imagine the morality. Could be a tough, could be a tough sell to the IOC. Absolutely. I mean, you can, I can just imagine the morality police in the streets uh, arresting the uh, uh, beach volleyball players and uh, <laughs> all the tourists who are not observing their mm. uh, headscarf properly. Um, but nonetheless, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a lot of fun. City, we know that cities like Paris and also Madrid, and we know the, the problems with the Spanish economy mm. at the moment, Madrid is still interested in either 2020 or 2024. Do you think that's just madness? I don't actually, because you shouldn't just look at the expenditure and just come up with a figure. As Jan says, there's a legacy to this. I mean, there's going to be a lot of kids who have been watching this and they're going to have role models and they're going to be interested in sports and, uh, you know. It's, 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 a, it's a very much more long-term investment, and you shouldn't just say, oh, it's cost $10 billion of what we've got out of it. It's not, it the calculation is not as simple as that. Great and Britain needs to boost it uh, as well, doesn't it? Don't you? Just before we wrap up, Wilfred, um, Belinda wants to ask you, if you and Radisha had a race now, do you think you could beat him? Mm. Well, absolutely not. You know, Radisha is in his, his own class, I would say, so no, I can't. But let me add on this, you know, um, about what we are talking about. I think sport is supposed to bring about unity. You know, if we talk about this country cannot help this, this country cannot do this. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, that the spirit of Olympics is about, you know, bringing the, the, the whole world together. But that's if, exactly if Kenya's athletes, this games, were doing incredibly, you would have that feeling of unity back home, but without any of the cost. Isn't that better? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, that's it. But at the end of the day, I say, I, I look at the bigger picture that is, you know, bringing unity you know, to the world war, you know, uh, we, we, regardless of where you come from, regardless of where the games is done. I'm all for unity, but the games have to be fun. I'm just saying that under this regime, if they held the Olympics in Tehran, it wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> Got a couple of other suggestions. Sarah says the Olympics are going to be worth watching because rugby's in it. Hungover Alan has tweeted us saying the last day of the Olympics should feature all the gold medalists playing dodgeball until we have the <laughs> ultimate <laughs> Olympian. That is a great idea. And Gigi is complaining that if uh, all sports should be done by men and women, no, why no synchronised swimming for the men? Exactly. Hocken, you could take that, uh, that cause up on your blog. I've never <laughs> thought of that, actually. Yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> Thank you. Go. I'll think about it. Nice to meet you, Parkin. Yan, thank nice you very much for coming in. Wilfred, we appreciate your time as well. Thanks to all of our other guests who have been with us as well. If you want to join me live on BBC World Service Radio at 21 hours GMT, we're going to be continuing the BBC's coverage on a programme called London Calling. It'd be good to hear from you. If you'd like to take part, you can post, as you always do for World Have Your Say, at facebook.com slash worldhaveyoursay. Speak to you soon. Goodbye. Наша пятигрядка в